for him. Oh, we need to love him and pray for him, help him find Jesus. That guy will never find Jesus. I'm going to pray that he dies and goes to hell. I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out. The only thing worse than an abusive pastor is an abusive husband and abusive father. Steven Anderson is a notorious jerk. He is, he's, he's famous, not because he leads some sort of mega church. Uh, as a matter of fact, his church is not all that big. I'm not even sure where he's located, uh, but the community seems to like his brand of preaching. He has a church. That's the sad part. He actually has a following. But the problem is he is clearly, without question, disqualified. Uh, let's go to the passage. Let's, let's go to 1 Timothy 3. And let's look and see, and then we'll go to some clips and see what's happening here. The Bible says the trustworthy statement of a man desires the office of an overseer. Look what it says about the qualifications. He must be above reproach. Nope, sorry, not. We're going to see why he's not above reproach, why he is guilty uh, or blameworthy of sin right now. Uh, the husband of one wife, okay, fine. But here we get to the the, the, the sticky stuff, the, the murky waters. Temperate. The word temperate simply means to be self-controlled. He absolutely is not. By no metric, by no standard, is he self-controlled. Now, is he is he uh, prudent? Um, this kind of goes along with this wise. Hard to believe that wise people don't kind of fly off uh, off the handle like he does, or say some of the things that he does, or behaves the way he does. So I don't think he qualifies for that. But also respectable, he is not. Th that part is clear. Now, the question is, who determines if you are respectful? Well, obviously, the people. It's not a. It's not something that you control, the pastor controls. It's not something where we're waiting for heaven here, down from heaven. Hey, this person is not respectful. No, it's how the people feel. They do not respect him. Now, I guess the people that are there, maybe they do. Maybe they're just afraid. Maybe they're intimidated. Maybe they, they think that a pastor is supposed to be tough. Uh, a man's man, a harsh man. Well, no, because you don't have to be a man's man to be that way. You don't have to be a jerk. And that's what he is. Hospitable. Doesn't seem to be that way. Able to teach. Not really sure about that. Addicted to wine. I can't say, but pugnacious. Uh, a bully. A violent person. That's him. Disqualified. Uh, but gentle. He is not peaceable. No, he is not. And then he says he must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control. Now, if you're doing so with violence, if you're doing so because you're beating it, beating submission into them, you haven't shown them how to walk. Uh, because what happens when they leave your your nest? Then they're not going to act that way because all you did, you use uh, a belt, you use a rod, you use a stick. And I'm not saying I'm against I'm against uh, corporal punishment for children. I absolutely am for that. Uh, if a parent wants to spank their child, now sometimes people can go overboard, and it seems to me by the admission of his own children, he has done so. And so let's just listen to his children have come out and they've done these interviews and they're all kind of in lockstep agreement with how he was as a father. I don't think in like my church or like other churches was like, he was very abusive, like both to my mom and us, like as kids from, from a very young age, I can remember my dad would, he would, um, he would hit my mom. He would like assault her in various ways to, to give an example, which like, this is like, you know, something random, but we, we always had like these bar stools in our kitchen. And, um, I remember as a kid, like they were always broken because he would like throw them at my mom. He would hit her with them. He would like hurl them across the room at her head and stuff. And so like, we probably bought new bar stools like every month. So there are three children that came out at least through that, that I know of, and we'll listen to the other two in just a second. But it's as though that that this particular clip that now we're going to look at, it, it, I guess it, I wouldn't say it aged well. It, it's almost as though he's maybe something happened and he wants to preach uh, not just to the audience in case it gets out, but also to himself. Maybe they know it's a, it seems like it's a small community. I'm not sure if it's a small community, then maybe it, perhaps it did get out. Maybe he went a little too far with the kids. I have no idea. But he's telling us how appropriate it is to beat the child. Well, a couple of things. We want to keep the, the, the passage that he's, that he's going over, the Old Testament passage, in context, but it doesn't mean beat the living daylights out of a child or to hit babies, which, which we're going to listen to and find out that that's something that he did. Just as much as the Bible says, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet, there's a commandment that says, thou shalt beat. Okay, this is the 11th commandment, my friend. It says, thou shalt beat him with the rod 
and shalt deliver his soul from hell. What's the world going to tell you? They're going to tell you, oh, any parent who loves their children would never spank their children if they really love them. But the Bible says the exact opposite. So that's just not why. That, that's not good. That's not in keeping with the word of God, how he's behaving, not just with um, children, his own children. But we're going to see this kind of how he also approaches the, the actual audience, the, the, the church, the people that he is in charge of shepherding. When I say abuse, I'm not talking about a good old fashioned ass whooping. I got plenty of those as a kid. I deserve plenty of those. I'm talking about something a lot more dark, a lot more sinister and a lot more harmful. These beatings were done with many different things. Probably the worst of it was done with an electrical extension cable and beating kids to the point where I have passed out from beatings just from the sheer pain of it. But it also was not just a punishment, it was being used as a way to garner confessions and get information out of kids. They would beat multiple kids in order to get one to admit to doing something. That is not a punishment, that is not corporal punishment, that fits the dictionary definition of the word torque. This should bother you. I don't know who it doesn't bother. If it doesn't bother you, then something's wrong. My dad basically believes there's no such thing as child or spousal abuse. He thinks it's just not real. Besides sexual abuse, he does not recognize any form of abuse. He believes the CPS should be completely disbanded and there are no situations and there's no situation where a, a parent can beat their child too far. There's none. Now, of course, he lies from his pulpit and claims he just uses a belt or a paddle on his kids because he's a compulsive liar. I am one that believes in disciplining your children, but there's a, a limit that you can go to. There's, a, there's an extent. And I understand that some things that we used to do in the past, maybe 30 years ago, how we may have disciplined our children or 50 years ago, 60 years ago, how our parents disciplined us or grandparents. I understand that things have changed, but I'm not one that says, let's just throw everything out and not and not resort to spanking or anything like that. But it seems as though he is using his temper, his rage, his emotions to get the best of him. He's not disciplining for the sake of correcting. He's disciplining for the sake of getting them to submit uh, and doing so out of anger. And you see this come up with how he approaches the people inside the church. Earth's not flat. Anybody who thinks it's flat is a moron. Oh, but what about geocentricity, though? Who cares? You vain jangler? And, you know, you say, why do you even bring this up? It's so stupid. Because I get an email about it every day of my life. Every day I get an email. Hey, what do you think about geocentricity? Listen, Copernicus, I don't care. Listen, Galileo. Do you even own a telescope? But, Pastor, I have a really important question for you. Do you think the Earth is flat? <laughs> Hey, Pastor Anderson, do you really think that there used to be giants 400 feet tall? No! <laughs> hey, Pastor Anderson, do you believe... Shut up! Why? Because it doesn't matter, and you are a lazy fool! You're too lazy to read the Bible and care about doctrine that matters! You're too lazy to go out and go to church and actually join a church instead of just surfing YouTube! You're too lazy to knock doors! Too lazy to go soul winning! So people can't ask you about a certain topic, even if you think they're dumb or the topic is dumb. You think it doesn't make any sense. Really? So how could anybody ever approach you? We're going to look at the scripture and see that that's just not how a pastor, how a shepherd ought to be. This church is not a free for all. This isn't an open mic. This isn't a karaoke bar. OK, I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out truth about every subject and tonight you're gonna hear the truth i'm gonna pray that he dies and goes to hell i have no love no love then get out of here get out of here you're destroying america okay if you want that kind of watered down leadership go to some house church with your amish buddies and sit around the coffee table with your coffee clatch this is a new testament church we have a bishop here we have an overseer here like it or lump it and if you don't like it, feel free to get up and leave the service at any time. 50% of people walk out. I don't care. Because you know what? I'm not going to pastor a oneness cult. Amen. I'm not going to pastor a Pentecostal church. I'm the pastor of a Baptist church. Amen. And if you're not a Baptist, then get out. You pray that you hope the person dies and goes to hell. What pastor says that? Well, not a real pastor. And then the title that I'm the man of God here. I, this is my place. I run this People listen to that. I, I, I can't imagine what would cause the people there. And I hope, I hope the empty chairs that we see 
is indicative of what's happening in the church, that, that there are more and more empty chairs showing up. And it is not pleasant and it's not fun and it's not something I want to do. And to be honest with you, these past few weeks have been the hardest of my entire ministry as a pastor. So this has been the most difficult thing I've ever had to deal with being a pastor of a church. We are, as a church, we're separating from Pastor Stephen Anderson and Faith Forward Baptist Church. So um, I hope that's the case. He, he, This man should never be in a pulpit. Let's listen to what um, a good shepherd would say. This is what Peter says. In 1 Peter 5, he says, therefore, I exhort you uh, exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you. Look what he says. Exercising oversight, not under compulsion, Stephen Anderson, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God and not for sort of gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lording it over those allotted to your charge, which is what he's doing. I'm the man of God. I'm in charge here but proving to be an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Anybody following my dad probably heard about him because they saw a montage of him hurling things or kicking things. Because I don't understand the theology. What is he kicking his pulpit for? Standing on his pulpit, hurling things. It's, it's not an appropriate reaction. We don't see this. As a matter of fact, let's. while I'm here, I didn't mean to do this, but let's go to Acts 20 and 28. Something that is stated here that also should kind of guide a preacher, a pastor. Be on guard yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the the, uh, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So how did he do so? He paid for this literally with his blood, which was born out of love. But then you want to lead them, not out of love, but out of compulsion in a dictatorial sense. I'm sorry, but that's just, that's just not godly. Now, the issue is though, because it's not just him, there are other pastors and you see other pastors that have some of these same little traits. And the question is, what will you do if your pastor is exhibiting these traits? God is! God is! in my favor. Play. Get out the mics if you can't say and your mercy. All this is, is someone who has a desire to control things. You are a controlling person. You don't like not getting your way. You want people to do things the exact way. Forgetting the fact that you're not perfect. Matter of fact, uh, far from it. But this is a person, and you see this in a lot of churches, where someone will hush someone, tell them to hush. And my dad definitely weaponized Christianity to where he taught us that from a very early age, speak against us or go against us or go to CPS or tell somebody, etc. He said, God's going to punish you, you know, and he would even say, you know, God will kill you if you do those things. And as a little kid, you know, as dumb as that sounds to believe that God is going to kill you for speaking out against your abuser, as a little kid, when you're being fed that every single day and you're being told that every single day, you have that ingrained into you, you believe it. So I very much, as much as I hated the abuse that happened, I very much believe that my parents were in the right. And my dad, my parents always say, hey, when you get older, when you become an adult, you'll understand. You not even going to church right now. You're staring at me right now. <laughs> so I'm just trying to help you out. You think you're hardcore, Isaac? Get up. 3.45 a.m. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Buy yourself an elliptical, get shredded because you're pretty chubby. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you out. I'm trying to get you ripped, rich, and religious, buddy. Because that's what you want. You want to be ripped? You look like baby Hercules from the Eddie Murphy movie. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> Google it. You'll see what I'm saying. Hercules, Hercules. That's who you are. But I know you want to be ripped. Hey, I want you to be rich, but rich towards God. Amen. And you're only going to get that by being right with God. Keep winning souls before you waste your life, your potential. And I want you to get religious. Because guess what? Religion is a good thing. And that's what you're going to need. So I'm just doing this for you. I'm going to try to help you out. But keep listening. I ain't done. Mark 9. They'll say things that move certain ways as though that they are really in control, forgetting that this isn't your church. And so if you happen to be at a church where they're compelling you to do anything, where they're forcing you, where they are um, 
almost intimidating you, not even almost, but in many cases, intimidating you with threats or coercion. That is an abusive church. That is an abusive man. Some of you may have a woman who's pastoring you, but that is someone who's abusive and you need to leave. Find someone that demonstrates the love of God. Doesn't mean that the person has to be weak and soft-spoken and and uh, weak-hearted. No, you can show love and also be firm and hold to the truth, but you do so because you're willing to lead people closer to Christ, not to have it your way. And so when you see a person like a Stephen Anderson, who I believe is one of, if not the most abusive pastor I've ever seen, the most egregious example of one, this is someone who should not be in the pulpit. And I think it can get dangerous. This is where you got to, where you get someone like a Jim Jones and you find out that these people are, are laid out because he they didn't because he wanted it a certain way. And so he kills them. This is what you end up seeing. And so if you were at a place like this, please leave, because also it's not just on them. Biblically speaking, it's also on you. Amen.